What's crack lacking? It's your boy Broshmo, just in case you did not know. So we're back again, once again, for another team centric mock draft. And today we're doing the Los Angeles Super Chargers. Uh, I thought this one would be very interesting because I think they could actually. I think they're going to make some moves in free agency, but we'll get into that in a minute. Go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. All supports, much appreciated, much obliged. Leave a comment in the comments section below. really helps the video out a ton. And the best way to support the channel is becoming a member, whether it's a bro tier or a bro scout tier. Member bro scout tier gets you access to the Discord, uh, access to my full rankings uh, for the draft as well as my big board. So anyway, I mean, like I said, all supports appreciated. Uh, we will have a mock the mock walk the mock. So if you're a premium member on walk the mock, you can come take part of that uh, with me, and uh, we'll be streaming that a little bit later today. So let's go ahead. Let's get into the nitty gritty. We're gonna look at their free agents first and foremost. Kind of get an idea. Um, since we're doing this pre-free agency, I kind of maybe get some sort of idea what they may do in free agency, so that we can draft appropriately. For the most part. <laughs> so uh, looking at their free agents, I think the only ones they would probably likely bring back, maybe Michael Davis. He's been, he's been, he's been okay. He's been uh, above average. So bring bring back help at corner. Nothing wrong with that. I think they get rid of Lamp Feeney. They've not been good since being uh, drafted. Uh, I wouldn't mind bringing back Perryman, but I think he's gonna get uh, decent decent enough money. And we're gonna look at the cap and. By no means are they cap strapped, but I think they do need to walk a fine line just in case. Uh, Rashawn Jenkins could be a nice cheap bring back. Uh, and I think Hunter Henry, they'll maybe get a long-term deal done with him. Maybe uh, the franchise tag, but no big free agents leaving uh, via free agency. You could say maybe Tyrod Taylor. Uh, back with quarterbacks kind of big, but let's look at what they can do with their cap because currently they're almost 24 million. I think uh, Turner's gone, he's owed 11 million, almost 12 million. So, unless they come to some sort of I don't know, restructure, I, I don't see him coming back. Oh, I forgot to m mention Melvin Ingram is a big free agent, and that is my bad for not mentioning it, but. Uh, I just don't think they bring him back. But look at that. We're already up to 35. Um, I don't think Mike Williams. I think maybe they get a deal done. But I don't see them moving on for Williams. He's been he's been pretty darn good. If anything, they'll extend him. Uh, Casey Hayward. I know it was a down year for him. But he's your best corner. And I think he, he fits Staley's scheme. And that's another thing. I think going into the draft. Because uh, I really think the Chargers are going to be active in this offensive line free agency. Uh, guys like Corey Lin um, Lindsey, I think, would be is in the market there since Pouncey's gone. Uh, you could say um, Alejandro uh, Villanueva maybe in the as terms of tackle. Uh, I mean, there's some quality interior guys as well uh, with Thuni being out there. But he's going to garner a high, high price. But I think they're going to be very active, try to bring in some veterans. Because you, you could add as many rookies as you want along the offensive line. Look at what happened with the Bengals. They had Mike, Michael Jordan and such. It, it doesn't work out that way. You need established guys in the league. Or at least guys that have had some sort of tenure in the league. But outside of that, man, I don't see really any big releases. I don't, uh, Chris Harris, maybe? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Uh, Linville Joseph, I think, comes back. So really, I think Turner's the only one uh, currently that I see them maybe move from. But I think they will be active in the offensive uh, line market and free agency. So with that... Like I said, we're looking best player probably available at 13. Um, if they do try to offer me something, I will consider. All right. So I know Slater's on the board. We're moving all the way down to 20 for that. Uh, is this the only team? And which team is this? Green Bay wants to move all the way up. 
Oh my gosh, dude. Oh, that is a... I, I want that. What kind of offer is that? See, train down's always great. It's always great because of this. You know what? Yes, I just because I think the Chargers will be very uh, active in free agency. Oh my gosh, all these trades. No. Just because I think the um, Chargers will be active on the offensive line in free agency. We will just wait our turn and see who falls to us. Um, no, I'm kind of content. All right, so let's take a gander at what we're working with here. Let's take a look. Bit everywhere. All right, I'm a big fan. Gregory Russo at that five tech spot's not a bad idea. Um, and Greg Newsom's a good scheme fit. They do need help in the secondary. Look at that run backs back to back. Wild. Um, yeah, Greg Russo actually might be a really good scheme fit. Um, if he really is, because that is the big thing, he got a lot of um pressure from the interior as a freshman. Uh, and that's the thing we don't really know in terms of what his development and it really depending on what how he measures out, he could be bet best at five tech, which be pretty darn good in this scheme. Keep in mind, man, he only has one year experience playing on the edge. And he was just a force. And he's good He's good against the run as well. I know they have Tillery there. But I don't think that stops me from adding... Adding um, just players or competition and talent to the position. So, and you think Tillery... I, I expect Tillery to be really good at that... In this scheme for Staley, but you gotta keep, you gotta bring in parts, man. You gotta bring in parts. I think we'll go with Rousseau here. It's kind of a home run, home run, or swing, swing to the fences. There goes Newsom. Oh, they want us to move up. No, I'm fine. Fine. Um, I might take though the next someone off. Oh no 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 no! We 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 might get our player here. Uh, no, I'm I'm very content with this pick. I'm sorry. Um, I really wanted uh Trevon uh Merrig here. Uh, Jason always still here too. Wow 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 wow. When's our next pick? Right here at 62. No, my that's fine. Merrig I think is the only first round quality corner. I say corner safety currently and just adding that to the defense would be huge. I know Dickerson, Creed Humphrey are here. So is Wyatt Davis. Let's see what other interior players, even tackles. Uh, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm kind of fine right now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to address that early right now. Um, Wow. Rondale Moore is still around too. Very interesting. Yeah, no, I'm going to go safety. I'm really going to try to get pieces for this defense. Um, they're probably going to be playing like a split high. Uh, opposed to single high. So they're probably going to have both their safeties uh, deep with potentially maybe another, uh, maybe like a, a nickel or dime back. Uh, or safety, I should say. Um, a third safety playing kind of that nickel or dime um, back roll. Uh, and I assume they're going to play Harris in the slot. That's an assumption. They might play him outside. But, uh, yeah, man, safeties are kind of important to Staley's scheme. 
So we're gonna grab that. It's just good value. Oh way being around was wild, dude. He could he could have that um that Merrick fall, you know. I uh, I actually kind of like tr moving up here. I think that's for a fifth. I I don't really mind that. All right. Mm. We keep addressing defense. And I really think we will. Um, Kendra Green's a guy to watch out. I think he'd be really good in this scheme. Uh, I'm a big Aleem McNeil fan. Um, Joseph aside, Joe Tryon would be interested in this scheme too. Uh, Jabril Cox I like a lot too. Um, Trill Williams would be the one to look out for, even Tyson Campbell. All right, let's take a. I mean, we've really gone defense with these picks. Um, I mean, the NFL is high on Joe Tryon. The dude's just ridiculous power. Can you imagine him? But I mean, Osai, dude, Osai is really good, especially here at 54. I think we'll just keep addressing the defense. Yeah, because I think the defense was more of a problem. Just grabbing more pieces for that defense. So we got our pick coming up. There's gonna be a. There's still gonna be good talent around. All right, this one's tough. Peyton Turner would have been nice. Uh, because James Hudson's good value here. Uh, and it addresses some need. And remember, Russo, I'm, I'm considering a five tech at this point. Uh, but I think I'm I'm looking, I'm looking. I mean, we could we could maybe get away with still just addressing the defense. Like I said, I think they're going to be active in free agency on the offensive line. Mm, I think we're fine. We're fine. So I'm I'm between Jabril Cox and Tyson Campbell actually. Tyson Campbell would be interesting even if they bring Mike Davis back. Uh Michael Davis, I think he'd be a good addition. Uh dude's got some press skills, but I think he'd play really well in maybe maybe not actually. Let's take a look at the other corners around. Maybe not. Yeah, Benjamin St. Jude's might be actually a better scheme fit here. When's our next pick? 97. We could risk it for the biscuit and get away with this. Um, who are the best players on the board? It's, like, Hudson's got a ton of upside, dude. It's super athletic. And if you look at if you consider the tackles available in free agency, even if they go Villanueva, who might be one of the top ones outside of Trent Williams, which I, I don't think he hits free agency. Um, grabbing Hudson, who really does need some time to develop, could be solid. So, as much as I love Jabril Cox, because I love him a lot, I think he would pair very well next to Kenneth Murray. We're going to go with Hudson, man. The dude, he's got v incredible athletic ability. Oh, Diggy Zua still on the board? Oh, no. Don't get to my pick. I, I'd be, I'm picking, I would be picking him, dude. Oh, no. Thank goodness. He's off the board. <sighs> oh, dude. That'd be great value for him, dude. I talked about Gregor Russo having some big upside at the five tech. Ah, Osa, man. Ah, uh, Smith is here, but we we kind of already done that with uh, Osai. We grabbed Hutchinson. Um, Shelvin. I mean, Lee McNeil and Shelvin, man. If because uh, Linville Joseph, 
He's not like a long term answer at nose. Uh, but I, I wouldn't mind maybe grabbing later in the draft, like Bobby Brown, even uh, T- Tadero Slayton. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, I think this is the pick here. Keith Taylor would be also solid, but I, I just like the, um, the, f- I guess you would say the physical, um, profile compared to Keith Taylor. I mean, St. Jude's has one of the freaky, like longest swing spans you'll see. Trey Brown, but man, Trey Brown size, he might be better like actually manning up. Wakalil's still on the board. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go corner here. All right, I'm per- I'm pretty happy. Oh, they want to. They want us to trade up, dude. I trading up gets me. Will have me being greedy, man. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, if we did trade up, I think we we still would have missed out on the interior players. Yeah. So it is what it is. Oh, move up to 16. We just give our late round picks. Nah, I'm fine for now. I'm fine. All right. Looking at who's on the board. Wow, Marvin Wilson. Kind of a steal here. I don't know if he plays nose, though. I think he said he was coming down and wait, man. Oh, oh, evil temptress, man. Frank Darby is also very interesting here. Uh, our next pick comes at 135, so it's not too far from now. All right, let's take a look at tackle. Walker Little still around, man. Ken, Ken, okay, Kendrick Green's kind of the guy I'm eyeing right now. Um, I think we're fine. Money Rice won't be bad. Oh, dude, I'm a big fan of Okadenji. And I like him in a stand-up role, too. Hmm... Tough, tough, tough. I mean, at this point, we could also bring in a guy like Kylan Hill. It'd be exceptionally dangerous. But I think I like maybe addressing the receiver position a bit more. Cameron Sample. Ooh, I think he. I think Sample might be better for. I don't think he's necessarily going to be your like five tech guy. I think he may be better on a th- actual three four. Did I say three four four three team? There's Chubba Hubba, dude. I actually wouldn't mind him. He has a ton of experience in outside zone scheme. Oh, Weaver's there too. Wow. He could actually fill the same role too. But like I said, we got Rousseau assuming he can do that. Yeah, I might go with just Chubba Hubba here. I know they got Josh Kelly, but I, Hubbard's way better than Kelly. Maybe addressing that. Uh, yeah, we should probably look at the uh, defensive interior. Um, yeah, Bobby Brown's still around. Next pick coming up at... Oh gosh, how far away is our next pick? Oh, there it is, 200. Did I miss, did I miss a pick in between? I think I might have. Or maybe I didn't, maybe I traded it away. All right, no I did. Uh, Yeah, 200, wow. Will Bobby Brown be there? I think Bobby Brown, he'd be the next guy on my board from the interiors. 
Uh, Rashad Weaver, though, man. Oh, that guy immediately translates. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, and well, I can't forget about Kendrick Green. Uh, I think uh, I, I'm going to still, I still, they need to bring, they should bring youth in on the interior. Uh, Green's my top guy here. I mean, you can make a case, Drake Jackson. Yeah, we're get, we're gonna go with we're gonna go with Green. And we got pick two hundred, man. Just hope value falls to us. Uh, I like this draft, though. I like this draft. So uh, a few guys that I'm high on and I mean their scheme fits. I really I guess this draft for me I'm Because you could also maybe bring in more playmakers. That's not a bad thing But I really wanted to maybe bring in some youth on the in on the offensive line that Probably you don't want to start right away because I like I said I think they're gonna be active in free agency in that regard and then also bringing in guys that fit Staley's system That was like my next priority. So watching all these guys go off the board. Oh, uh, Semi Fahoko. Honestly, if they don't decide to bring back or Cornell Powell, did Fahoko go? Oh, so did Bobby Brown. Dang it, dude. Uh, Cornell Powell could be a a big a big boy receiver. Jalen Darden. There's no way. Six round Jalen Darden. Nah, man. Or Kate Johnson. Yeah, I'm kind of sus on uh, the Draft Network's uh, big board. Uh, Josh Palmer, I can see falling. I'm really just the guy. I'm really probably the only person high on that cat. All right, let's see where, what we got working with, though. Um... I don't think we're gonna be able to bring in uh, a nose. I mean, you can't hit everything in these drafts. You gotta, and it'd be nice to bring in someone potentially um, as a replacement. Chris Rumpf around here? Ooh. I mean, potentially Russo ends up being edge too, so we'd be with Osai and Russo. So maybe not wise to go there. Uh, we could go linebacker. Garrett Wallow was actually pretty solid in coverage. Um, Thomas Graham could be a solid pick here too, but I think he's going to be a day two guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Cornell Powell, man, because that guy could go as early as the fourth. Uh, he's probably a fourth, fifth rounder. I mean, he's not like, uh, he is a bit older, but I mean, he is a potential replacement for Mike, uh, Williams. If they don't bring him back, just going to act like I don't, you know what though? I mean, he doesn't have this, uh, doesn't have the height. Oh, neither does Cornell Powell. Why do I feel like he's like six, four? That's on me, I guess. Oh, yeah. Then I'm going Josh Palmer, dude. He's way more athletic. He's got good ball skills, man. He just had crappy quarterback play. Uh, you could also make the case here for Austin Watkins. I just like Palmer a lot. Um, again, Johnson and Darden, I don't expect to be around for these picks. So I'm going to act like they're not here. I should, I should just end up using my big board. But I like a little bit of randomness, you know. There we go. Yeah, I like this draft, man. I like this draft a lot. I think we did pretty darn well. We it's back to our pick. Pal is still there. Uh, Diamador Lenoir. Yeah, I think he'll be around in the six, man. But again, this is a guy I think ends up moving to safety. Joshua uh, Kandow. <sighs> be solid. Um, Demar Hamlin. But, I mean, that's basically Derwin James. Well, Derwin James, exceptionally light. Cameron Bynum might be... 
Mm, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm really trying to, you know, make good scheme fits too. I don't want to just snag guys that I love. Tamar and Terry could be around. <laughs> Dude, that hurts my heart to think the NFL is probably so low on Tamar and Terry. I'm so, oh, I love Tamar and Terry so much. I'm probably going to end up with like a fourth round grade on him. I'm a, I'm a big believer. All right, we got a pick coming up. Robert Rochelle wouldn't be bad. Like, just add him more. Like, he, he's definitely a work in progress, but man's got some upside. Uh, Quick look here. Again, yeah, there, there's none, none of these guys. I'm, like, thrilled. Um, Maybe Anthony Hines here, but again, it's not much a linebacker that I'm thrilled about, but, I mean, it is the seventh round. I don't mind looking for some value, though. Austin Watkins would be it, though. But we did just go back to back on our tight end or on our wide receivers. Um, yeah, Luke Fer Farrell, honestly, might not be a bad option. Dude's got some upside. It's just he's um, what's the word? Very uh, he has a very small sample size. Let's see. Yeah, Robert Rochelle, though, dude. He's like a blank canvas. I mean, we're old at the corner position. Man, as much as I would love to snag... Uh, oh, Marco Wilson's there, too. Opposed to, you know, Rochelle being a blank slate, Marco Wilson's just filled with bad habits um Luke Farrell maybe it may be that you know I I really do think they bring Hunter Henry back though so let's go Robert Rochelle dude like I said this guy's got a lot of physical upside or uh, athletic upside I should say he's not as physically impressive as we thought initially or at least I did so that's our draft man I think we did a pretty solid job Let's go check out our draft, please. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's check out our picks here. So this is the draft class. It was honestly that that trade here was money. Like they got Micah Parsons, which okay, uh, he wouldn't have been a bad like pick here. But we get we got oh we ended up trading that second rounder, didn't we? Yeah, they got Joseph and oh, so we moved up for Osai then. So essentially, let's see. So they got the 13th, got the 29th, the 62nd, and the 35th. Um, and then we used that and one of our fifths to move up again. Okay, so essentially, Micah Parsons, but we came away with Rousseau, Kendrick Green, and Osai. All right, so. Let's talk this thing through real quick. First off, Merrick, uh, I think he's a guy you can play deep. Uh, Derwin James might end up roaming around the box a bit more, maybe even around the slot. So you might roam around the line of scrimmage. So maybe you have like uh, Merrick and Adderley back there, or you put James back there too. You know, I'm, I'm, I think he could do that as well. Greg Russo, this again, this is me assuming he is a five tech. Uh, that he puts on some size. He was at his best rushing from the interior. Keep in mind, it's freshman year. He was ex exceptionally raw in his development. Joseph Asai, though, we know can play the outside. He can. He has experience being a hybrid guy, so he can do. He can. He can. He can rush from hand in the dirt to sprinter position. So we're not worried about that. Uh, James Hudson. Probably not going to start him immediately. He is definitely a developmental guy, but with huge upside. Benjamin St. Juice, I think, great, great wean span, and I think he could play pretty good off coverage. Uh, Chubba Hubbard, she's better than Joshua Kelly. Uh, Kendra Green is a good scheme fit, so 
I think we did good there with Hudson and Green. Uh, Palmer and Terry are just guys I'm so high on. Oh, they're going to be in my like underrated list. I know they are. And then Robert Rochelle's got – he's got big athletic like uh, traits. So, like, extremely developmental guy. But I think we did good. And uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead let me know what you think in the comment section below. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. <laughs>